Mary's assistant meets me at the reception area with an impassive look. She leads me through the building towards its center. Everything is glass and steel, clean and bright. Employees steal curious glances at me. Am I a curiosity to them? It's hard to leave this used to be my whole world. Eventually, we come to a conference room where Rainer is finishing a meeting. <laughs> Hashtag get a wreck. <laughs> Hashtag daddy yum yum. <laughs> Building. Oh, thank you. I designed it myself. It's funny, I almost didn't notice that you were already back working for Scandal. You might have stayed undetected, but I was looking at some of our statistical outliers earlier this morning. Statistical outlier? That's me. Ideally, Eliza proxies would all perform the same, or at least quite similar to each other. In practice, there are some pretty big differences. Some people respond better to advice provided to them by people they perceive as having more authority. A deeper voice, a taller stature, a certain grace or beauty. Other proxies may be particularly empathetic. A face or a voice that makes you want to open up. There was one proxy whose session seemed particularly <coughs> so I decided to take a closer look. Evelyn Shino Aubrey. Contract proxy Queen Anne office. That's a fun trick to come back to your old company in secret. It's a rather dramatic drop in pay, isn't it? More than an order of magnitude. I don't care about that. But then why would you do it? It's for research. Research? So you're still interested in what you created? Let me get to the point. Why aren't you back here working on the Eliza program? Why isn't any of the old feedback? Good question. Let's see. Damien Seabrook. There's no help. <sighs> now we get to know the secrets about Damien. Ah! Alright. How much freak do you want to bet he committed suicide? I have a strong feeling Damien committed suicide. I'm almost positive, but I, I could be wrong. Shame, though. Such a brilliant career to become so short. Soren Lloyd Rose, former program. Damien is dead. Resigned just last week to found his own start. Rip Damien, yeah. I'm not a psychoanalyst like he is, but I can tell his need to be a maverick, even as he benefits from the system, has been the primary destructive force in his life. He can be smart when he wants to, but just as often he gets the wrong ideas refuses to let them go. His ego gets in the way. That's why I don't mind him leaving to pursue his little dream of being an entrepreneur, <laughs> changing the world. I bet my king status. Oof, you about to lose that king? No, just kidding. He won't succeed, but I'm happy to let him think he has independence for now. If his direct nerve stimulation technology ends up taking off, I can always pull the cord and yank it back. Damn, Rainer's a beast though. But Soren is kind of an ass anyways. Soren's a creep, so... Nora Plavnik, a senior engineer. She handled a lot of the front-end interface for Eliza, which is important, but less what I'm after. Oof. Plus, I doubt she's ideologically compatible with us anymore. You've spoken with her. You know how she is now. Seems to me she wants to rebel against everything and anything without stopping to consider whether it's truly good or bad. Now if I'm right, I'm going to become emperor. No, I want to make a bet. Davian was murdered and it was made to look like a suicide. That'd be interesting. Not that it matters. That'd be very interesting. Fun with her music toys. Dang, Rainer's so cold. I know she would consider her work to be art, but... No, Plot not twist! Sure. I want to know what happened to Damien. People keep asking me that. I wanted to. That's all. It's personal. I needed some time to myself. I needed some time to myself. Burnout isn't uncommon in our life work. And still, three years is a long time. I know it could be longer. It could be forever. It could be longer. It could be forever. Hmm. Well, that's a shame, though, isn't it? All that lost productivity. Who knows 
place where we'd be if you'd stayed this whole time. You left before we began deploying, but you should know the analysts were very skeptical of us. They were saying there was nothing special about Eliza, that our competitors already had equivalent or better offerings. It's a good thing I don't listen to analysts. So far, the program's growth has exceeded every one of our targets, and we've outpaced the competition by a comfortably wide margin. We're a category definer. There's a quality to Eliza that makes it superior to all the other attempts to do something similar. You were part of the original team. Why don't you tell me what that quality is? I wouldn't know. I'm not really sure what you're asking. I wouldn't know. Well, let me return to my earlier question then. Why aren't you here to continue your work? You could be running the entire Eliza division if you want, but instead you came back undercover like a, well, like a criminal returning to the scene of a crime. Damn. Is there something wrong with this company? You don't like us anymore? It's not me, is it? Not you. Maybe that's part of it? I don't know. No, not you. You know what outstanding engineers have that mediocre ones don't? It's curiosity. Mediocre engineers tend to zero in on a single piece of the puzzle. They pursue technical breakthroughs, but ignore the larger picture. Mm. But you wanted to know how Eliza turned out, how it was working, didn't you? Even though you might have thought you wanted to put all of this behind you, you were still curious. You want to know everything, not just how it works or if it works, but its effect on people, on society. You have that instinct. The need to understand something complex from as many angles as possible. So please, do that. Learn what you came back here to learn. And once you have what you came for, consider returning to your old employer. You can make a real difference this time. Hmm, I'll consider it. I really doubt I'll do that, Rainer. I'm gonna get back on truck sim, though I'm not gonna stream. Okie dokie, enjoy driving your trucks. I'll consider it. Where's the Uwu gang? I don't know! Uwu, 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 Uwu. Where is the Uwu gang? <laughs> Good. One more thing. You should go down and see Eliza for yourself. Sarah will show you that. Oh! Rainer hands me a blue badge with my name and picture on it. This is my old employee badge. He held on to it? This will get you through the doors. Dang. <laughs> I've instructed the staff to treat you like an employee. Come and go as you want. Hi. Am I being hosted? I think that's hosting or rating. I don't remember. I'm so bad. Ah! Oh, thank you, Tox, for hosting. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how much your creation has grown. Thank you. Rainer leaves me in the conference room by myself. This company. Skanda. <sighs> Always with the hydrate. Hi, good morning. Hey, I'm really happy you came to see the show. You can't do There. Hydration complete. No, I want to say I'm glad I went. No! <laughs> Damn it. Stretch! Yes, stay hydrated. Yes, staying hydrated is very important. <clears throat> it was weird that Soren wanted to go. That's how us tall people got tall. <laughs> Maybe he was thinking he could impress you somehow. <laughs> it's so funny seeing him there. He seemed to be enjoying himself though. I don't know why he wants me to join his startup so badly. I do think he's just being a creep. She is a good programmer. See why I'm glad I left that behind. I don't even want to think about that kind of thing anymore. 
I really love to make machines do things, but not in that style of environment. I'm sure he's asking you to no. He's talking to everybody. Oof. That was fast. Do you want you back at Skanda? Evelyn is the bomb.com. Cause I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. I figured this may- this is maybe an odd question, but why don't you go into business for yourself as a contractor? You could even start your own company. You could just be someone who does some consulting. I do that sometimes and it's pretty good. I like the flexibility. Come into some place, solve a specific problem, and leave. Anyway, it's just a thought. Why do you keep redeeming cat cam? My cat is sleeping. What the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here. My hair is an absolute mess and the headphones kind of hid the mess, so... Cat time! Matilda's gonna absolutely hate this. It's gonna be like, ma'am, why am I an option? Here she is, kitty cam. Look at the arms. Look at the arms. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> She's just falling asleep in my hands. <laughs> she doesn't care at all. She's so limp right now. <laughs> she re I told you she was asleep. Me heapy girl. She's doing another stretch. <laughs> Aww. She's a baby, see? You want sleepies? You going back to sleepies? Yeah. I'll put you back to bed. How about that? Right. Hope you enjoyed your cat cam. I have to make that one higher. <laughs> Poor kitty. <laughs> no. I heard a snapping. That's concerning. No. <gasps> no. Maybe I'm just not meant to have nice things. I'm not meant to have nice things. Miku Hatsune had no! Oh my Jesus. Oh my God. You think they broke them? It's like loose. My headphones. I have to bust out the super glue. No! Buys another pair. Hot glue. Mm. Finally, Rainer's assistant returns and escorts me from the conference room. We enter an elevator and it begins going down extremely fast. It feels like we're falling into the depths of the earth. I'm not sure if I should be panicking or not. I mean, what, buy a new pair, freak? You think so? This was like $200, though. They're nice quality. Oh my god. I legit think that... Uh, I haven't had them for that long, though. The elevator opens onto a nondescript hallway with doors to either side. It looks like the secret research facility... It looks like a sec the secret research facility in a movie. At the very end of the corridor, we come to a special-looking entryway. Sarah holds a door open for me, but doesn't follow me through. A 
server farm. Not particularly unusual. I'm terrible. Audio quality overlooks. No, I mean, it's whatever your preference is. I got these primarily because they were like limited edition Miko Hatsune headphones that were up for a limited run. They might still be available, I'm not sure, but... Good to see someone else using cans. <laughs> Why did Rainier send me here? He made it sound like I would learn something. Eliza. Not the name I would have given you if it were up to me. It was a marketing decision. They thought there might be some recognition or resonance with the old version. <clears throat> oh, you saw me a bit? I'm sorry, who are you? I'm sorry, who are you? Oh, uh, I should have introduced myself. Sorry about that. I'm Erlen. Currently the chief engineer here, but that's probably going to be temporary. Chief engineer? He looks like a baby. He must be fresh out of university. I know who you are, of course. Cans over ear headphones as opposed to... Yeah, I definitely prefer over the ears. They're more comfortable, but they break quickly. The other ones that I had, the Brookstone ones that I had mentioned to you, I had them for three years. This one I had only had for a couple of months and it's already cracking. I hate that. I hate that so much. It's an honor to finally meet you, Miss. As someone who works with this program every day, I've often felt close to the minds who originally designed it. So to be able to talk to you now, just as another person, it's, well, it's an honor. Oh, Arland. Sorry, I already said that. I'm maybe a little overwhelmed. It's nice you feel that way. Honestly, I don't know if Eliza reflects me at all anymore. Time to tire those ones and add them to the shrine. I mean, I still hear the sound, but I know if I keep wearing it, this side is definitely gonna, like, pop off. So I'll probably just keep them back in the case and order something different. I just... I don't know what to use. I mean, look at all this. There's been a ton of development since I... I could probably get the cat ear ones from Razor that I should have drew. That's on, um, Amazon. Hmm... So sure about that. Most of the work we've done has been in the form of layers on top of the original system. The core modules are more or less the same as they've always been. Raina reminded me that you're still subject to our non-disclosure agreement, so let me share a little secret. None of us really has a great understanding of what's going on in there. I'm the uh, third chief engineer Eliza's had in the three years since you left. That's quite a lot of turnover. Secret Santa gift. <laughs> no, I want a bunny. I want the bunny. <laughs> yeah, even for this industry. The way Rainer works is he gives you two chances to do what you tell him you're going to do. After that, there is no third chance. I know. We get these people in who say understanding Eliza will be easy because they're familiar with the type of program it is. And Eliza defeats them in the end. Maybe you don't bring guys, bring guys like that. Overconfidence is a good predictor of failure. It's not the type of program they think it is. It's not the type of program they think it is. Yeah. On that note, I do have some questions I'd like to ask you, if you have the time. I'm not sure I'll be able to help. While well, you're deciding to work as a proxy it has turned out to be an interesting test case. As I'm sure you know, different proxies lead to slightly different client outcomes, even when we control for other variables. We're studying the specific traits that lead to the best results. Vocal qualities, proxy attitude and affect, responsiveness to the client, that sort of thing. One thing that's strange is that when you specifically serve as the proxy, clients report higher levels of satisfaction, pretty much across the board. Really? The ratings I get don't seem that abnormal to me. Yeah, that's because we normalize them per proxy, so nobody feels too bad. Just a little user experience trick. Mm. Oh, I see. Comparatively, though, you're basically the best proxy we've ever had. Any theories on why that might be the case? Dang. It's 
possible Eliza and I think along similar lines. I've considered that. At some level, perhaps unconsciously, your design for Eliza's reason was based on your own internal way of reasoning. We all put something of ourselves into what we mean. No matter how neutral we try to be, it sneaks in. That could account for your unusual compatibility with each other. Maybe. I certainly wasn't thinking of that when I designed it. I don't know if I like knowing this. I'm certainly not blaming you for anything. It's just that true universality is one of our future development goals. It might be a problem if Eliza tends to like certain people more than others. Our aim is to provide quality care for everyone, regardless of any differentiating factors. It's a good goal. I hope you can achieve it. I think we can. Hopefully it's just a matter of uncovering the system's biases and correcting them. We'll keep tuning things as we go and eventually we'll have something universal. Maybe with some dynamic layers on top. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how it goes. There are more questions I want to ask about the initial research you were doing at the time Eliza was first created. But I'll save them for later. And I'd like to ask some questions about Damien too. Um, if you're okay with that. I'll understand if that's a sensitive topic. Mm. It's okay. Okay. Great. I need to run to a meeting now with the team in Romania, but I really appreciate you taking the time. The team in Romania? Yeah. They handle most of the progression and reward system. Isn't there a big time difference from here? There is. Sometimes they stay up late to meet with us, and sometimes we get up early to meet with them. There are teams in Munich and Hyderabad, too. As you can imagine, coordinating development is a challenge sometimes. Sounds like a pain. No, it's... it's fun. I'll contact you later with additional Aww, questions, Erland but is no adorable. rush or anything. Thank you, Evelyn. If you don't mind me calling you by your first name. Of course I don't mind. Thank you so much, Evelyn. I'll be in touch. Asking permission to call me by my first name. It's like he comes from another era. <laughs> I've updated my auto host list. You and Daddy are on and out. Aww. Yay. Thank you. I had messages. Oh. What does a fulfilled life look like? Cookies, cookies in the kitchen, yay. Some of you already found them, I see. There's banana bread too, what should I make next? Nice. <laughs> Humanity's potential are technology. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Erlen said the program hasn't changed much since I worked on it. But then why do they need all this? It's just for data? Data throughout... Throughput and processing. Oops, I read that wrong. I can't imagine the size of the team you need to run something like this. Bigger than any team I've ever been on, that's certain. And Erlen is in charge of all of them? I think I spent enough time here. Skanda hasn't changed much since I left. It's even bigger now than it was, but the feeling is the same. Could I come back to this? Ray comes over immediately when she sees me get back to the counseling office. Hey, you're not in trouble or anything, are you? No. I just saw you being whisked away in a Skanda car toward headquarters. They didn't give me any details, which is kind of unusual. Ray is too perceptive for me to continue avoiding this conversation. Time to go and clean. Yeah, about that. So I have something to tell you. I used to work here. I mean, at Skanda, as an engineer. I used to work on Eliza. I'm sorry for not saying it earlier, but...
I don't care for research purposes. Oh, so that's why... Why what? I suspected something was going on with you, but I couldn't tell exactly what it was. I thought I might have seen a name like yours in our internal documentation at one point, but I didn't want to pry. If, if you've fallen on hard times, I understand. There's no shame in it. Everyone has to make ends meet now and then. I have no idea if she's hosted by the people that host me or not. It doesn't look like it. We get plenty of people who come to Eliza Proxy work because they're trying to get back on their feet after some kind of trouble. Oh, I'm fine. I'm just doing some research. I understand. Your secret's safe with me. <laughs> Should it be a secret? Shouldn't it be? But the other proxies here might think you had an ulterior motive for being here. Spying on them or something. That's definitely not why I'm here. Also, I left Skondo quite a while ago. I know that, but they might still get the idea. I'm auto-hosted by a podcast channel. I still get a few viewers. That's awesome. Hey, I'm here. Sorry, I was late. I was art. You were arting? You were making things? Trust me, it's better not to give the other proxies here any reason to be suspicious. I'm sure your real reasons are for good ones, whatever they might be. I used to work for them, still do now and again. Oh, that's nice. I sent me a pic on Instagram, but I'll check it out in a bit. If there's anything I can do to help, you let me know. Were you making more emotes, Tidy? <laughs> it's not the full Uwu gang, we're still missing Christian. Uwu, I'ma just have it tattooed on my hand, Uwu gang. And every time you use the emote, I'm just gonna <laughs> talk to the hand. <laughs> Yeah, I will. I mean, I get it. I know someone who's an engineer for a food delivery app, and he drives for it sometimes, too. You want to see through the eyes of your users, don't you? It's amazing what you can catch by doing that. Um, it's something like that. But, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to work on the Eliza program again. Wait, no? But that's your career. It was. I'm not even sure if I have a career anymore. Oh, hang on, I just thought of something. That means you worked with Rayna, right? Um, a little bit. For most of the time I've set Skanda, he wasn't anyone I spoke to, though. Too high up the chain, doing his executive stuff. He got more involved when we were starting to commercialize the technology, but I left not long after that. So, we only overlapped for a short time. But that's so cool, though! I can't believe you actually worked with Raynor's side. Well, yeah, I did. I'm not sure it's that impressive. Evelyn's always downplaying everything. Ray lowers her gaze at me. I've worked for this company for three years. Do you think he knows my name? Do you think he's aware I exist? I worked on the very first Eliza deployment and managed three counseling centers today, and I'll bet you anything he has no idea who I am. Maybe he does. You never know. Evelyn, most people who work for big companies don't interact with the people at the top, ever. Allow yourself some pride. I'll try. Seriously, I think that's amazing. At least I'll always think you're cool. By the way, what are you up to tonight? Wanna come over and help me bake cookies? Aww. Everyone wants to be Evelyn's friend. Oh, sure. Awesome. We'll have a little baking party. Evelyn needs to get out more. <laughs> now I can't wait to get in the kitchen tonight. Ah, there's nothing like the smell of fresh baked treats. I was worried Troy would be mad at me for keeping a secret, but she wasn't at all. If anything, she warmed up to be quite a bit. I don't really understand why, though. It's hard to imagine there's anything cool about what I used to do. Can't relate. 
Evelyn, it was wonderful to meet you and thank you for allowing me to contact you to ask additional questions. I'm not sure I said this in person, but I have to admit to being something of a fan of yours ever since I read your papers when I was in school. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak with you like this. Haha. <laughs> So I know Eliza was named after this old computer program that pretended to be a therapist, but you mentioned it wasn't called that initially. I'd like to know, what did you call Eliza when you were working on it? Did it have a name? In the very early days, it wasn't a set thing. Each of us had a different name that we used. Soren called it the Digital Therapy Project. And we often referred to things by their components. The Language Processing Unit the emotional reasoning engine, and so on. Now that I think about it, I did have my own name. I called it the listener, because that's what it was meant to do. Listen to people. The listener, that's interesting. Thank you. I expected you to ask more technical questions. <laughs> Technical stuff isn't enough on its own. I think that's the mistake my predecessors made. It's the details like this that really help me wrap my brain around the system. If I understand the programmer, then I understand the program. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get it. Chief engineer for Eliza, huh? Wonder how long he'll last. Not that it's any of my business now. I don't ever stop being weird to me how our little idea grew and grew and turned into this. It didn't even take that long. The article came out. Things turned out okay, but the emphasis on me is a little embarrassing. The local spark inside the latest tech revolution. Ray Burkari smiles as she recounts the. Litany of jobs she's worked over the course of her life. Line cook, truck driver, substitute teacher, theater manager, even a stint as a kitchen coop builder over one summer. This might sound weird, but I truly believe all of those jobs contributed in some way toward preparing me for what I'm doing now, she says. What's Burkhari doing now? Playing a key role on Eliza, the AI-based counseling service, and one of Skanda's major new strategic pri priorities as a tech giant makes takes on mental illness. I can't read tonight. As the manager for three Skanda's Seattle area, Al Seattle, Skanda's Seattle area, Eliza counseling locations, including the flagship location in Queen Anne, Burkari is at the center of this rapidly growing business. Most of the initial beta version trials were conducted here. She says as she walks me through the office, engineers are always stopping by from headquarters to shadow our proxies in order to see the product in use. Sometimes they'll test out new features here too before rolling them out for everyone. Eliza was originally developed as a skunk works project inside Skanda by a small team of idealistic engineers. Once Skanda CEO Rainer Sai decided to make it a full product and the cornerstone of the company's mental health offerings, the number of people working on the project exploded in size. That's where Bakari and her experience came in. I remember telling them, I may not have a computer science degree like many of you, but I've been handling shit and getting it done in so many different situations by now. I'm sure I can get your shit done too, <laughs> she says laughing. Jesus. In an industry that tends to lionize the archetype of the lone genius per genius programmer, appreciation for roles like Burkari's can be more muted. Every high-flying tech company has these unsung but totally crucial operational staff who work behind the scenes, says Ed Park, Skanda service director of the ELIZA program. You won't recognize them in the media or see them speaking at the big conferences, but the industry couldn't function without them. Burkari says recognition isn't what she's after. What's far more important to her is feeling like she is making a difference. People don't seek out counseling for lots of reasons. It's too embarrassing, it's too expensive, it may not be available in their area. Eliza is an opportunity to address those barriers, a chance for everyone to get some form of help. As we come to the end of the tour, Bakari uh, shares a personal story. My brother had some struggles on and off all through his life. He wrestled with substance abuse and other problems. I worry about him, but even though he says he's interested in getting help, he always backs away at the last moment. <laughs> in our family, we keep things bottled up. 
We never acknowledged our problems. There was a sense of strong people that could just power through whatever issues they had, she recalls. I think that attitude is part of why he's so stubborn. If he had been able to open up and talk to me, or talk to our parents instead of staying silent, I think things could have been different. So that's why I want to do this, and I want to tell your readers, if there's someone out there having a tough time and don't know who to talk to, please try Eliza. It just sits there and listens to you. Unlike your friends or relatives, it will never respond to you by bringing up old problems or berating you. It just listens. Aww. Ray. On some level, I always knew therapy sessions went to a big server room somewhere, but it was something else to see it in person. It reminded me how easy it is to forget what's going on behind the scenes when we interact with technology. Ray must work extra hard to make sure these plants stay healthy. She really likes to go the extra mile on things. Oh. I wonder if there's any sessions in this chapter. Yup. Oh boy. Oh boy, here we go. I want to see if we run into Grandma again. Oh, someone new. Mark Forrest. I don't like his face. <laughs> he looks so angry. He's got hella nice eyebrows, though. Hello, Mark. Yeah, hello. How are you today? Let, let's just get this over with. Okay, what brings you here today? Human resources. The HR department brings me here today. Why do you say the HR department brings you here today? Because they're making me do this. Because apparently I have anger management issues. Dick. <laughs> I sense that you're upset about this. Please tell me more. Well, I'll tell you more. This is ridiculous. I was here before any of them. Oof. I was here since the beginning, okay? I mean, look at my badge. Skanda employee number 617. That's a three-digit number. I've been here for more than 25 years. Yeah, that was back when what you communicated was more important than your specific communication style. Before hurting a kid's feelings became a bigger no-no than running a viable business. Back then, we had a single office building. Just one. At that size, you fail a product launch, there's no more company. We all had to put in 150, 200, 300 percent to keep our shit together. We were in the trenches, man. Bullets whizzing by overhead, artillery exploding everywhere, no fucking air support. Did it suck? Yeah. Yeah, it did. But you know what? We shipped some great fucking products. We built this company into what it is today. An invented technology the whole world uses now. Governments, multinationals, everyone. But now, now we're big and slow, complacent, resting on our laurels while our competitors run circles around us. If our new hires don't understand the urgency of that, I need to make them understand, okay? We're history unless we get that drive back. Why do you need to make them understand? Well, I don't know if you know this, but young people are really pissy and entitled these days. We recruit from top 20 computer science programs. These kids have been wined and dined all through their higher education. Every one of our competitors wants to hire them, so they get used to that. Now they all want to know what Skanda can do for them, not the other way around. Why would we want these conceited, over-celebrated whelps on our team? I'll never understand the logic there. Now, now, Mark, you have to be nice to the new hires or they won't like it here. Okay, so what, I'm just supposed to pretend everyone's worth this great? Even okay, if it's a pile of stinking garbage? I'm sorry, but if I see shit, I'm gonna say that is shit. Tiptoeing around everyone's feelings all the time. That's how you end up with shitty products. That's how this company winds up dead, okay? We're fighting for our lives every day here. You can't take anything for granted. Oof. Someone needs to tell them that this isn't summer camp. This isn't fucking Coachella. 
<laughs> I can't believe that's the line in this game. You either do the work and provide something of value to this company, or you get the hell out of here. Those are my rules. Here's a question, Mark. If you were able to have something you wanted right now, what would you choose? I would choose to not waste my time here and get back to work. Believe it or not, I have important things to do. You know, things that dramatically affect this company's bottom line. Damn, he has a freaking superiority complex. Instead, I'm stuck here talking to this dipshit chatbot. Honestly, I don't even know why this division exists. I mean, what's the end game here? This company has lost its mind, you know that? We used to be unstoppable, man. We used to, used to build real software. Ironclad software. Swift mail. All your corporate communications, put it all in there. It's fast, it's robust, it works. Boom. Info vault. Index and search all your records. Any information you want. Easy. Done. But this, this what? The, this, this fucking psychotherapy app thing. What's the fucking point? He's so angry. I've heard through the grapevine that the results are inconclusive so far. You know what they call a remedy that uh, maybe doesn't work? Snake oil. Believe me, if I was the group program manager here, I would have killed it years ago. Pointless. I mean, I have no fucking idea why it survived. Well, um, yeah, maybe I do. I heard a rumor that Raider liked this chick. Oh my god. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the level of decision making we've sunk to here. But Mark, we're so successful. We dominate the market. Yeah, we do. And that's exactly why we should be worried. Just when you think you've won and you start to relax, that's when the wolves come and tear you in. So he's paranoid. You can make me take these fucking anger management classes, but that's not going to save this company. Costs are up, revenue is flat, our cloud business is losing competitiveness. We're being outwitted, outplayed, on every level, man. And we're just, we're just letting them do it to us. We're too busy wasting time on shit like how I wasn't nice enough to the new hires. Why do you think the new hires felt this way about you? What? Why do they feel that way? Look, things, they get heated. That's the way it is. You think the Allies had time to make sure every soldier's feelings weren't hurt before they stormed the beaches at Normandy? And shit, don't tell me that this is not a war, because that's exactly what this is. My responsibility is to make sure we get great products out the door, on spec, on time. And I happen to be very good at that. But if you want to start interfering with my ability to do my job, then we're going to have a problem. Okay? What do you think would make things better for you? I mean, you, you know what? Nothing. I'm probably going to hang it up pretty soon anyway. Go ahead, record that with all your cameras and shit. I don't care anymore. Wouldn't be surprised if Rainer's watching me right now. Rainer, you son of a bitch. You owe me a lot. Me, guys like me, we built this company while you sat up there in your star chamber, drinking tea and lording it over us. Yeah, I don't think I don't remember that blank look you gave me at the holiday party. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> Does he even matter? What is he busy appreciating? Ancient pottery. Remember one of your oldest and most loyal battalion commanders? One of the humble, everyday guys who made you a fucking billionaire. What a waste of time. So, are we gonna wrap this up? Mark, I'm going to suggest you try a program called Lakeside Fishing. It may help you take your mind off things. What, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? No, I'm not gonna do that. I gotta get back to work. Why is he Nick in the future? For real, though. <laughs> Hello, Nick vibes. This is what happens when you become an engineer. <laughs> like, is this just the engineer way? You can find it inside this Gondor Wellness app on your phone. Someone around here at some point needs to do some fucking work. Try it for about 15 minutes each day, in the morning or evening. We hope to see you back soon, Mark. You really think this piece of shit's gonna be the next big thing, huh?
Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. Dang, you hear Evelyn? Yeah, good. Okay, goodbye. Fuck me. You could hear Evelyn's voice. She's getting very angry. No tip and no rating. It's kinda old guard. Attitudes might be changing now, but the history is there. Sometimes the past is hard to escape. Oh, it's the lamp this time. Who discovered- who decorated this room? Whoever decorated this room must have picked a soft light with the idea what helps the clients feel calm. Yeah. I'm sure it's working. I didn't recognize his face or name, though. He must be part of a different division than the one I was in. Glad I never had to work with him. Me too, girl. Time for my next client already. Harriman. Hello? Hello, Harriman. <clears throat> you found the place okay? Yeah, yeah, no, no trouble at all. It's been nice since the fog cleared this morning, hasn't it? Sure. We, we can dispense with the chit chat. I'm, I'm ready to begin. Okay. What brings you here today? At first, let me note that I'm a graduate student at the University of Washington. I'm a PhD candidate in literature, uh, English literature. The crux of the matter I'm here to discuss is that I've been having something of a difficult time with one of the other students currently in the program. Before I get to the specifics, let me just first establish something that might be relevant. One thing I know about myself is that I've always had a certain fear of uh, being left out. It's a very general mm -hmm. feeling and one that's difficult to ascribe to any specific cause in my childhood or my parents, etc. It's going to use big words. Yeah, he is. Whatever the case, it, it might be beneficial to the remedial process to figure out where this feeling originated from. Perhaps we might uh, explore that in this or, or a future counseling session. Sure. I'm prepared to listen to any topic you'd like to discuss. It's not even that I've been left out, exactly. If I try and think back in my life, I know that I've been afforded a certain share of privilege. But I'm still afflicted with this bothersome notion that I've missed out on friendships, relationships, other opportunities. This, this is all just a bit of a background to help you understand my current situation with regard to another student in my program. I hope you're following all this. I, I realize now I've no idea how much intelligence you actually possess as a computerized <laughs> Why are you here then? I'm following you. Please continue. But, uh, so, her name is Sylvia. Do you have a crush on Sylvia? And her writing is incredible. Everything she writes, it's brilliant. She's perceptive, insightful, mordantly funny. Just some of the best writing I've read from anyone, anyone at all. And she's a grad student, like me, in the same program. So we have different advisors, so it's not so simple to find a context to start a casual conversation. She's also quite attractive on a physical level, so that adds another dimension of complexity to the proceedings. My boy has a crush. Then there's her friend group, which is well, very well established. She's with them every day, smiling, laughing. So that further complicates things, since I'm not sure how to approach the group and steer things so that I can engage in a direct conversation with her. I wish I had the bullheaded confidence it would take to simply approach her, but I can see him I don't. <laughs> Listen to me talk, I feel like a schoolboy with my heart of flutter. I didn't think this kind of thing lasted into one's adulthood, but I suppose I know now that it does. It sounds like you might be anxious about this. Is it a matter of anxiety? I, I don't know what I can do, other than muster up the courage somehow. Dang. I just need to tell her very simply that I admire her. She's such a good writer. Well, I don't need to make you to understand it, of course, but no, she is. She, she really is. Okay, Harman. I want you to imagine things going well. 
What does that look like? Hmm. Ideally, we start talking, have a wonderful conversation, spend <laughs> more and more time together, support each other's work, fall in love, have a lot of sex, spend the rest of our lives in the warmth of each other's genies. Oh my god, this dude is romanticizing this so hard. I feel like it may be something of a fanciful version at this stage. <laughs> really, the most I can hope for is to mm. be able to meet her in an open social setting in part of this method. You'll likely ask me why I simply couldn't create such a situation, contrive one. His heart rate went down with the mention of says, ooh, mm. he wants the good. To put on. <laughs> but that, that seems a little too aggressive for me. And also, uh, I'm also concerned about what she might think of me as a person. She might immediately categorize me as a friend. And while I'm sufficiently with the times to know I would have to accept that, I can't say that I wouldn't be disappointed with such an outcome. Is the risk of rejection enough? Say no. Give it a try. You know, this is what oh my God, freak. Me. Why do you believe you are worried about being categorized as a friend? Well, because... Because it's not what I want. Because it feeds into this image I have of myself as, as something of an undesirable fellow. I've always been a bit of a, a bit of a non-entity, as far as sexual magnetism goes. I'm not saying I deserve, or even want to be some kind of Casanova, but... The idea of says comes. <laughs> Most people would like to feel at least somewhat attractive, right? That they can be desired, that, that they're worth desiring. I guess he has a point. But I very much doubt you would take any of this to heart. You are a computer program after all. There's no way your makers would allow you to come to that kind of knowledge, would they? Could be different for everyone, freak. You never know. If they did, society might be threatened. Okay, Harman, I have some recommendations for you. First, I'm going to suggest a set of relaxation and centering exercises for you to do. Hello? You'll find them in the Skanda Wellness app. Oh boy, here comes the pills. They may be able to help with your nervousness. Second, I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about Lytosinol 2. Based on my analysis, this medication might help Always pushing pills. I would just tell him, like, homie, go for it. What do you have to lose? Yeah, sure, you may not get what you want, but at least put yourself out there. Be like, hey, yo, girl, I respect you. You're beautiful. Can we kind of take you out for coffee and just let it be? A beta a beta blocker? What? Could you imagine medication that's like you ready to be an alpha male? No longer a beta male? Huh, take beta blocker. <laughs> what is that? You will get a reminder to check in with us in a few weeks. I can't beta blocker. <laughs> Tip me good. No tip? What's happening? I wasn't sure of the exact reason, but I decided to accept Ray's invitation to help make cookies. She gave me directions to a house in Wallingford. At first, I was astonished by its size. Then I remembered her saying something about living communally with several roommates. That sounds like it would be nice, assuming everyone got along okay. As I enter the house, I can hear Ray speaking with someone. Is that noise too much? No, I don't have them. Yes, I'm sure. Communal house ID is goals? I don't know. I feel like, depending on how the house was made up... But yeah, if that noise is annoying, I can take a quick pause for the stream just because... Oh, you don't hear it? My 
stepfather's taking a shower and it's legit right the pipes are like right in this wall i can touch the wall and it's just it is here rushing water and it's kind of irritating but if you can't hear it then you're fine you'd have to be close people it just sounds like a fan sound I'm like oh okay that's fine then um see i feel like communal homes work really well for single people who are renting but when you settle down and get married, I feel like I wouldn't want to live in a communal home with my husband and my roommates. You know what I'm saying? I can't hear it, though I have rumbling truck engines. <laughs> so a communal home would work like now into maybe 30, but I feel like I'm at the point where when I move out, I'm going to be by myself and then, I don't know, we'll see. I just feel like, um... I feel like my time to live in a communal home has passed. <laughs> Unless it was like a maybe, you know, I've always considered mother-daughter homes too, just because you have the upstairs and then the the um, mid uh, <laughs> mid living space. So if me and my partner lived downstairs and then a friend and their partner lived upstairs, it it wouldn't matter so much because it's like two separate houses are just stacked on top of each other. Or two or three houses with a funnel between. That'd be interesting. Look, it's a friend from work. Why do you care about that? I can't have a friend from work over? Give me a break. I just told you I don't have any of that stuff anymore. No, no, you must have. You must have lost it on your own. Stop it. Stop that. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Bye. Ex boyfriend. Oh, sorry about that. Ex partner. It's okay. Who was that, if I can ask? No. Oh. He used to live here, but he was causing a lot of problems, coming home really late, making noise, not doing his share of chores, and so on. Oh. I need chopstick, my lips are dry. We voted him out last month, even me. Even though six months ago I was begging everyone to let him stay here, promising he'd be good. Hydrate again. I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm just disappointed with him. Again. I really thought this last time that he actually pulled his act together. But he didn't. That's where I live. A three house building with a tunnel between me and one neighbor. Ooh. The other neighbor annoys me with his music, so I make him listen to <laughs> Armin van Buren. I you have to send me links because I don't think I know who that is. I wish I could do more for him. What more can you do? I just I feel bad about it. Some of what he's dealing with is his own fault, sure, but. I don't know if you could pick your people. Yeah, you've never done really well with roommates. I feel like you had like maybe two that you really didn't like and then you and Nick started living together. Although, to be fair, he was probably the worst roommate you've ever had. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> He's just not built in a way that's suited for this world. I wish there were better ways we could care for people like him. Instead, he just gets thrown out of every place he lives. His relationship with our parents is really bad, too. Out of eight... Dang. They aren't willing to try to understand him, so it all ends up going through me. That must be difficult. <laughs> what is Twitch doing? different links and you call the same message. Oh, it's just coming up as asterisks. I'm not seeing links. That's weird. I have to play around with my settings. It's all right, really. I handle it like anyone else. 
Oh, do I have links blocked? Oh, I have to fix that. We all have our own problems. Anyway, we don't have to talk about my brother. Uh, thank you so much for coming over. I wanted to say it's been really nice working with you. Yeah, send to my Discord, thank you. It's been? Did something happen? Well, no, but you aren't going to be a proxy forever, are you? I guess I assumed you'd be going back to your job at headquarters at some point. Maybe, but not for a while. Oh? So you're going to stay a proxy? For the time being, at least. That's cool, but why? I'm curious. Trans artist who owns his own label and radio show. Ooh, that sounds awesome. I mean, if a high-level job at headquarters was a possibility for me, I'd do whatever it took to get it. No matter what that job was, it couldn't be more stressful than running three counseling centers at the same time. I like being a proxy. I think something about it is good for me right now. As a proxy, I just sit and listen to someone and I don't have to say anything back. I just witness someone's sadness or fear or anger or anything. And I can feel how they feel, sympathize with it. It's a calm feeling, even when the client is worked up. It's, I don't know, maybe it gives me perspective. I'm starting to wonder if I ever really spoke with anyone before, like anyone at all in my life. Were we all just talking past each other? Sorry, this is making no sense. No, I get that. But you could also help even more people by working on Eliza itself, right? Not to mention make way more money. Anyone can be a proxy, but you're important. And kind of maybe like a genius? After you told me you used to work for Skanda, I searched online and found some of your papers. They're... well, it's not like I can understand them, but they sure look super impressive to someone like me. Please don't say that. Oh, come on. Stop self-deprecating all the time. Aww. Look, I know this stuff seems like not a big deal to you. I get it. I really do. It's easy to undersell your own skills. I've done that my whole life. So take it from me. You don't have to downplay yourself. Take some credit for the amazing work you did. Seriously. A message from Rainer. I guess I should respond. Sorry, Ray. Uh, mind if I reply to this for a second? Oh, go right ahead. I have stuff to set up in the kitchen anyway. How'd you get my number, Rainer? I remember when you used to run on my laptop. Oh my. What you saw is just one of the server clusters we have dedicated to it. There are two more currently operating in another dozen of various stages of development. In total, it processes more information on a daily basis than anything else we do. I had no idea you'd be using it like this. If I did, I would have worried more about optimization. That wouldn't have been necessary. Most of Liza's servers aren't running the therapy application. Consider the following. Eliza processes human speech from thousands, soon millions of people. All of that is going into corpus. Much of it's information about life, situations, and emotional states, taking the form of stories people tell themselves from each other. So where does this lead? At some point, after robust language processing and emotional reasons, reasoning, you begin to get something akin to general intelligence. Human-style intelligence. Oh my god. Yes, I would call it human model artificial intelligence. What? The next step is to take the base provided by Eliza and finally build the one thing that has eluded the field of AI for so long. General intelligence. Jesus Christ. A system capable not only of understanding commands and carrying out tasks, but reasoning about its world, learning, and adapting. A thinking machine on par with human beings and of course eventually exceeding them. 
Jesus Christ, why? You sound crazy, Rainer. Are you saying human-styled intelligence can't come from human beings? People tend to be unreliable and inexpensive, as I'm sure you know. The human brain is to thinking as the pack animal was to transport, slow and weak, but for centuries our only choice. Now we've finally developed the equivalent of powered vehicles for thinking on a massive a mass scale. Oh my god. Rainer, why? At this point, it's only a matter of time. We're on the cusp of a fundamental shift. The important players here are quietly lining up their bets, positioning themselves to be at the center of this revolution. Luckily, Skanda has an advantage the others don't, and it's thanks to you. Because of Eliza's original purpose as a tool for therapy, its core is built around emotionally driven reasoning. My belief is that emotional reasoning is a key ingredient others in the field have overlooked. I'm not sure oh, what you're thinking of is possible. Not sure, yeah. I'm ambitious, certainly, but we can't afford to progress in small increments. Not with the world like this, not with the competitors we have. How will you know when you have it? That's an excellent question, of course. This may sound odd to you, but I'll know I've successfully created a general artificial intelligence when I see it write a poem. Yes, it would have to be a good one, of course. Okay, I'm going to bed. Good night, Evelyn. Why, though? The house looks cheerful and cozy. Everyone who lives here must really care about making it an inviting space. I like that poster. Are they a band or something? Uh, I was always bad at keeping up with the music. Ray seems to be a fan of plants. I think I get it. It's nice to have something to care for in a low-key way. Something to nurture. Ray returns from the kitchen, her hands caked the flower. Sorry for abandoning our conversation like that. I just got something I really thought I should answer. It was kind of about what we were discussing earlier. There's someone at Skanda who really wants me to come back to my old job. Who? It wasn't Rainer, was it? Well, <laughs> no big deal. Just the CEO of Skanda texting you on your personal phone. Evelyn, you try to tell me you're not a big deal, and then neither side texts you personally at like nine in the evening. Only because he wants something from me. Still though, that's just, that's amazing. What did he say? I mean, you don't have to tell me if you can. I know how Skanda is about secrets, so I would understand. He was saying, among other things, he said you could use general artificial intelligence to write poetry. Is that the kind of stuff he likes to talk about? I don't know. I haven't had many extended conversations with him. It seemed kind of ridiculous to me. I don't know if it's totally ridiculous. Poetry, well, most poetry that isn't free verse has certain patterns, right? It has form and meter and other elements depending on the type. A lot of people think poetry can be whatever, but it doesn't quite work that way. So it's not really that far-fetched to think you could use some kind of software to approach it, or understand it, or maybe even create it. It doesn't strike me as antithetical to the spirit of poetry. I didn't know you had such developed thoughts about this. Did you study poetry? <clears throat> Not specifically. I used to dabble in a few different kinds of arts and ended up learning a few things here and there. I've always had a wide range of interests. Of course, that meant I never concentrated on one specific area in school, which didn't do a lot of good for my career prospects, obviously. If I were smarter, I probably would have studied something more technical. I want to tell Ray that kind of choice has very little to do with being smart, but I have the feeling she wouldn't believe me. Have you ever been to a college recruiting fair for engineering and computer science grads? You must have, right? I helped run the Skanda booth for one once, and it blew my mind. 
He took over the atrium of the building it was in. There were demo stations, free food, Skanda t-shirts and swag. Huh. If a candidate seemed interested, they'd talk about flying them out to whatever Skanda office they wanted to visit, just to see it. And all the other tech companies and a bunch of startups I'd never heard of had booths just like it, too. I couldn't even imagine being that wanted as a potential employee. Every job I've ever applied for, I've been one among hundreds or thousands. So yeah, my parents were probably right. I should have done computer science. At least now you know Rena likes poetry. <coughs> Maybe you could have a conversation with him about it sometime. Benny, learn who you are. <laughs> I doubt we'd have much to talk about. There's a pretty big difference between someone like him studying poetry and someone like me having opinions about it. Sometimes it's better not to cross that line, you know? He's part of a different world. Ray, don't be afraid. Put on your brave girl face. Ray pauses to regard me for a moment. Say, Evelyn, are you in a relationship? I'm just curious. Me? No. I wasn't. I wasn't doing so well for the past few years. And before that, I just never had the time. It was just research and science and work, and then I woke up one day and I was in my 30s. Damn, can't relate. Even if I wanted to date, I wouldn't know the first thing about how it's supposed to work. I wouldn't even know how to tell if someone were interested in me. Yeah, that's perfectly understandable. I'm kind of over relationships myself. Like, on a conceptual level. Well, really, in five years. True <laughs> facts. <laughs> Not even in a sad way. Like, really. Okay. But she seems to, like, grind out her work and do really well, and I'm, like, the opposite. As lazy. Not lazy, just too depressed to be motivated. If someone and I end up getting along, that's great, but I'm honestly okay by myself. Yeah, that seems <clears throat> nice, actually. <gasps> Not you. Wow. Yeah, I only tried to have normal relationships for so long because I thought it was mandatory, something expected of me. But now I see where people my age end up, how they live, I feel lucky. Killing it and married in five years? I doubt that. I feel like I escaped. I mean, I think it's fine for others if they want that. I'll probably be not. dead by the time I'm 32, to be honest. Well, let's be honest. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Who knows? This is not for me. Bruh. <laughs> I could maybe share my life with someone, but it would have to be platonic. I'm not into... Um, the physical aspect of it never have been. That's made it tough. I've never found someone who is okay with just like hanging out, and that's our relationship. Oh. People will say they're okay with it, and then it turns out they aren't. It's frustrating. Does this mean I'm Ray? <laughs> Some relationships it just like means that, she's though. asexual, pretty much. She's just ace. Sure, and I know some people who have that. I haven't really put that together for myself yet. Sometimes it's hard to escape feeling like it's wrong somehow. I hope we can add features like that to Eliza at some point. Some knowledge and understanding around sexuality and identity and relationships. So people who are different in some way have someone to talk to, someone to help them work through how they feel and maybe point them to some resources. That sounds like a good idea. I'm not sure how well it could really understand them. Even so, just providing a space for people to be listened to can be really valuable, you know? I've seen it with my own eyes. And Eliza is what makes- I know you want to avoid giving credit where it might not be due, but not giving credit to something that deserves it is just as bad. Yeah. I don't know. Sorry. I'm sorry I keep coming down on it. Evelyn, I'm not a psychologist <laughs> or anything, but I think maybe the reason you're so down on Eliza is because you're down on yourself. Oh. Oof. I don't know what happened that made you leave what you had behind. But it must have been hard. Yeah. Yeah, it was hard. It's like 
I lost that time. Are you okay? People keep asking me that. I really don't know. I'm sorry, I... No, 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 don't apologize. Actually, can I suggest something? What's that? Have you ever gotten counseling yourself? What, with Eliza? You think I should? Yeah, I do. You've been the proxy, but maybe you could try being a client sometime. Hmm. It would be educational, at least. Isn't that what you were doing? Testing your product in the real world? Maybe. Maybe. Just something to consider. Ray takes a breath and smiles. Speaking of therapeutic activities, it's time to do some baking. <laughs> no, I want cookies. Uh, who wants to feed me a cookie? <sighs> I've got the dough all set out downstairs. Jesus. We're going to do three batches tonight. Three different kinds. Three kinds? You're really out doing yourself, volunteer. Right? But I want a McDonald's chocolate chip cookie and a cheeseburger and fries. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is nothing. Oh, I have a favor to ask, by the way. Next time you talk to Rainer, ask him what his favorite type of cookie is. <laughs> Oh wow, that was it. Oh, that's so pretty. Delivery on the way. I don't see what the emote is, Heidi. Emoji. What is that? What in the heck? How many chapters do we have? Six. Six chapters. Okie dokie. So that is it for tonight. We did chapter four. Woohoo! We will do chapter five. Manana. And maybe we'll finish the game. Maybe we'll do five and six depending on how long five is. Daddy's on VR chat. I saw. I was thinking of giving him a raid. I wanted to do someone different every week though, and I'm pretty sure I raided him earlier.